Hello, everybody. Bored to put to my next fine bag to my little pony friend is magic. This could be season nine, episode eleven, student council. And yeah, I'm quite excited about this, you know, as I am with every episode. I say that every time. I've noticed. I don't know why. Anyway, I think I'm just gonna get right into this one. So, yep, I think I'm good to go. So here we go with this in three, a two. A one. Oops. I know how hard you've been working lately, so I figured you could use a break. Ooh. <gasps> Trixie, this looks amazing, but my job doesn't really seem like work. Oh, speaking of. What? <sighs> what was that about? Sure, being counselor for the students at Twilight School of Friendship is demanding, but... Oh, one sec. Very demanding, it seems like. What was I saying? Oh, right. Being able to use the experiences of my checkered past to help young students feels pretty great. Oh, yum! Mmm, thanks. Of course, I feel nothing but admiration for the work you do, but it is a little all-consuming, and I miss spending time with you. What are you talking Aww. about? We're spending time right now. Well... Mm. Hold on, thought. <gasps> okay, she has a point. Sorry. I cast a spell on the door to my office, so this bracelet goes off whenever there's a knock. Yona is having the worst time with her braids lately. Anyway, you were saying? Not spending much time. <laughs> Ever. Yeah. Alright, we're back. I totally respect my younger cousins' decisions to stay sea ponies, but they've never been on dry land. Preparing for a visit with them is almost as much work as the research assignment Headmare Twilight gave me on hazardous fauna of the Everfree Forest. How would you describe a shower to creatures who live in water? So far, I've got warm and steamy. Actually, steam has water in it. Silverstream, there are a lot of students who want to see me today. I just need a few shower adjectives that don't rely on the wet part. <sighs> well, there's clean, relaxing, um... Relaxing? I don't know. A nap's relaxing, too. Warm and clean are okay. Wow, I have to give this some more thought. Yeah, oh, a lot okay. more thought. Well, I'm here to help. My door's always open. Except for today, of course. What? If we leave now, we can finish everything before sundown. Trixie, I can't leave. It's almost spring break. Spring break? Twilight right, and the others have already left to celebrate the spring solstice in Canterlot, and I have to help the students with any issues before they head home for the holiday. What's up with Twilight's geode? Aww. I know you're busy, but I hope you haven't forgotten about the spring solstice. The party Maud and Mudbriar are throwing. Sunburst is coming to town. You and I promise to make the cake. <laughs> How could I possibly forget about that? She's been so busy. Okay then. No pony is saying your job isn't important, but plans you make with your friends are important too. <sighs> yeah. I know. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have forgotten. Obviously, I need to be available to my students, but that doesn't mean I can't help the with all the things a little we different. have to do. Good. Great. So, what are all the things we have to do? Hmm. Maud needs streamers for the decorations. Sunburst wants us to pick up a genuine pre-equestrian spring solstice chafing dish from the antique shop. Of course he does. <laughs> Mudbriar wants chafing. a bouquet of flowering sticks, whatever that means. And I thought we were both looking forward to Mrs. Cake teaching us the secret recipe to her famous spring solstice cake. Oh, I totally am. <laughs> but we could just buy a cake from her, right? We could, but then we'd miss out on baking together. Plus, the time I spent flattering and convincing and begging her to share the recipe would be for nothing. And we promised to make a cake, not buy a cake, and the great and powerful Trixie keeps our promises! Okay, 
Why don't we just split well, these jobs? I'll get the streamers and the chafing dish. You get started on those sticks and I'll be right back. <laughs> you know, why don't I just hang on to this? Wouldn't want to forget the things I just said I'd take care of. Because I am totally going to take care of them. No, she's not. Could it be Plum Blossom? I have no idea. Ah! Oops! <sighs> Sorry, Rose, but I need a bouquet of flowering sticks set. I thought I was getting the flowering sticks. Uh, I'm still not exactly sure what they are. No one is. Right, got it. You get the sticks, I'll get the streamers. Right after I take care of what I'm sure is an even smaller student problem than the last one. <sighs> <laughs> I the? think I have the shower thing under control, but I can't figure out how to describe a towel. Now, Smolder, I understand the school can be a bit drafty, but that doesn't mean you can breathe fire anywhere you want. Yeah. Oh. What do you mean, Trixie uh, already picked up Sunburst's genuine pre-equestrian Equinox chafing dish? That was my job! I think. Wait. Was it? Bacillus, <laughs> it's perfectly normal for a changeling to struggle with identity issues, but... Counselor Starlight! When you're done, I need some synonyms for the word dry. Or really just help explaining the concept. Oh, wait, Mrs. Cake! You can't close. Trixie and I need to learn the recipe for your Equinox cake. Oh, it's fine, dear. Trixie was already here. I told her everything she needs to know. What? No! Oh, the great and powerful Trixie might keep her promises, but the busy and distracted Starlight sure doesn't. I promised to help her today, and I haven't done a single thing! Oh, that does sound hard, dear. And I'm not quite sure how to tell you this, but your health is glowing. Of course it is. Trixie, what are you doing here? It's the one place I knew I could find you. I am so sorry about today. I'm just so busy. I kind of feel bad for her. Obviously, your students are more important than your friends. That's not... Starlight, do you have a minute? Actually, Silverstream, I don't. Besides, I need to lock up the school for the holiday, and it's time you caught the train home. I'm sure a smart and capable student like you can figure out the solution to any problem over the break. But for now, the counselor's office is closed. I have a cake to bake. Aww. Oh, that, well, that worked. Yeah. Is this cake supposed to be so sharp? I mean, it looks really <laughs> interesting. Technically, it's not symmetrical or aesthetically pleasing. Oh, him. Maybe it's not the best cake, but we made it together, and that's what counts. I'm glad you brought it, and everything else. I'm very excited. This is going to be the most perfect party ever. And with all of your students home for the holiday, I won't have to worry about you being summoned to your office in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. Nothing is going to take me away from this party. Hello? Starlight? Starlight? What's going on? Sorry, this is a private cavern. Is Starlight here? I was told she'd be here. What's wrong? I'm Terramar, Silverstream's brother. I've been looking all over for you. Silverstream is missing! <gasps> Uh-oh. That's bad. I don't understand. Silverstream didn't come home? Mm-mm. I was supposed to meet her at the Mount Eris train station, but she never showed up! It's a long way between Ponyville and Mount Eris. She could be anywhere. Our parents are leading teams of hippogriffs and sea ponies, searching the land and sea between here and our home. They sent me to check the school. But the school's closed. All the students are gone. Are you sure? I know she had a big project due for Twilight. Do you think she might have stayed to finish it? 
She never told me about a project. Well, to be fair, you closed your office the last time she came by. Really? Huh? What kind of counselor turns away a student with a problem? The kind with too much on her plate. Starlight has always gone out of her way for her students. And I mean always. <laughs> Except apparently when it matters. This is all my fault! You all go back no, to the party. No, probably Tamar not. Tamar and I will check the school. We'll find your sister. I should have known it couldn't last. Party perfection is more of a pinky thing. Mm, I wasn't going to say anything, but these flowers are just glued on, so technically it wasn't perfect already. <laughs> but that's probably not important. Yeah. You check the grounds and I'll look inside. Silverstream? She's not down here. I don't see her anywhere. Did you check her room? Well, she's not here. No, she isn't. But look at this. A cockatrice? Could that be what her project was on? Oh, no. You don't think she went into the Everfree Forest to find a cockatrice by herself, do you? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> oh, what are you all doing here? We came to help. We couldn't let you handle this alone. Technically, she wasn't alone. But we wanted to help anyway. Thanks. All of you. But the students are my responsibility. I'm the one who didn't do my job when it actually mattered. I might share a bit of the blame for pressuring you into leaving work early. But I don't want to ruin your party. We can still have a party. A search party. Can we <laughs> talk about all this later? <laughs> Silverstream might be in the Everfree Forest alone. <gasps> we think she went in to do research on cockatrices. What? The gaze of the cockatrice is known to petrify any who dare to cross its path. And the reptilian birds are elusive and solitary. Where would we even start? I have a lot of experience telling ponies that I have experience with the dangerous creatures of Everfree Forest. Follow me! Okay. The only thing she ever did was her some minor. Directionally astute Trixie says we go left. Does she actually know where she's going? Or is she just guessing by this point? This way. What? I wonder if she actually knows where she's going. No. Ugh. Yuck. Ah, oh, they've been here before. Weren't we just here? Trixie, do you have any idea how to find a cockatrice? No, but usually, when there's a dangerous creature in the forest I don't want to meet, this is how I meet them. We might need a more concrete plan. <laughs> yeah, yourself. exactly. Um, according to Silverstream's research, the cockatrice prefers rocky terrain and ample shade. Rocks and shade. Hmm. I can't imagine where we'll find that in a forest. Actually, rocks aren't the most hospitable environment for shade trees. Technically, pine trees like Pinus Cambra or Pinus Sylvestris can grow from narrow crevasses or cracks in a rocky rhizosphere. You complete me. There's some pine trees oh. over there! Oh my god! Okay, that was aw oh. Awesome. I thought you said they were solitary! They are! 
This must be some kind of migration. Oh, at least there's no sign of Silverstream. I can't imagine getting caught in the middle of that flock. It's just lucky we're all over here and they're all over there. Technically... Don't even say it! Whatever you do, don't look at them. Their gaze can turn you to stone. So what do we do? Run! Yeah. Okay, this is bad. I'm so sorry. We have to get out of here. I know. Hang on. We can't leave. Silverstream might still be in the forest. Stay here. I'll get the others. Be careful! Uh oh. The clucking is coming from everywhere! The great and powerful Trixie fears no clock! Okay, that worked. Mod, we've got to get out of here. I'm not leaving him. <gasps> Mudbriar's been turned to stone? I didn't think I could love him anymore. We've got to get out of here. But we haven't found Silverstream. We can't leave yet. Oh no. Come on. How are they going to fix that? This way. Oh, the tree house. Silverstream found a good place to hide. There could be hundreds more cockatrices on the way. If this really is a migration, it'll take a full lunar cycle to complete. Oh, I have to get word back to our parents that Silverstream could be surrounded by those terrifying birds! And as handsome as Mudbriar is now, we should probably catch one of them to turn him back to normal. Ugh, oh, yeah. this is all my fault. I'm never taking time off from my counseling duties again. That seems a little extreme. Really? If I hadn't galloped off to a holiday celebration, Silverstream would be safe with her family and you'd all be enjoying Mott's party. Instead, my student is missing, we're surrounded by a flock of petrifying chicken snakes, and Mott's boyfriend was turned into a hunk of rock! You got the hunk part right. And to top it Stop, off, we have please. no idea if Silverstream even came to Everfree at all, but I have no idea where else to look! Has that always been there? What? Oh, that's the student's treehouse. Apparently it grew from the Tree of Harmony and... <gasps> of course! That should have been the first place we looked! She probably is in here somewhere. <gasps> Silver Spring, look out! She's helping me with my project. I what? don't understand. After you encouraged me to solve my own problem, I decided to get my project done before I left. That way I could really focus on my family during my visit. The school was closed, so I came here. Why didn't you tell anyone? Mom and Dad are worried sick. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Once Edith volunteered to help, I guess I lost track of time. Cockatrices are really friendly if you know how to interact with them. I can't believe you figured out how to trigger her nesting response. They are really fascinating creatures. Did you know that they migrate to the Everfree Forest once a year? Can you imagine what would happen if you stumbled on a whole flock of these? I have a few ideas. Oh. I'm sorry, you guys. 
got turned to stone looking for me, but I'm glad Edith was able to turn you back. How do you tell the difference? I have mixed feelings about it. Technically, I will always be a stick pony, but the experience has given me an even deeper appreciation for the density and permanence of rock. Swoon. Yeah. Silverstream and I should get huh. going, but I wanted to thank you for everything you did to help find her. I just wish I hadn't abandoned her in the first place. Starlight, you didn't abandon her. I might as well have. And even though it turned out all right, things could have been a lot worse. You can't be expected to supervise your students every second of every day. I'm not so sure. I like that you're always available, but it kind of makes it okay to come to you with stuff that maybe isn't super important. Of course, being a school counselor is a big responsibility, but always being at work isn't fair to any pony, especially me. Do you think if I had set times to see me, it might help you decide what you really need to talk about? To be honest, you really weren't very helpful with the other stuff anyway. Yeah, wait, what? Happy <laughs> Fantastic, everybody! Wow. Who wants a piece of Mrs. Sorry, I'm not talking about that, I'm just mostly listening. Petrified dessert? You had me at petrified. <laughs> well then. Okay, that was quite an interesting episode. It was actually very interesting to see the cockatrices back again. That was kind of unexpected. But, um... Yeah, it was also nice to see Maude and her boyfriend and... Just the way she was talking about him. Anyway, this has actually been quite fun. I hope that everybody enjoyed. I know I had a lot of fun. Let me know what y'all think of this episode, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye-bye.